so the idea here is that we have a curve C, which is represented by, we've been dealing with vector-valued functions. So here's our curve C. Let's say it's oriented that way. And at any given point, we might be interested in the direction of motion, maybe some velocity vectors, acceleration, and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> okay, so at this point, we know that if the orientation is this way, then the tangent vector, the unit tangent vector, looks maybe something like this. So we're going to say that the direction of motion at time t <clears throat> is in the direction of the unit tangent vector t. We're going to call r of t a position function which should not be anything new to you guys. You probably didn't call them R back in the day. <clears throat> um, before we define velocity, let's talk about speed. Speed will be defined as ds dt. In other words, this is the instantaneous rate of change of the arc length traveled um, at an arbitrary point. So like, you know, using the limit definition and all that stuff. But instead of, you know, change in distance over change in time, um, the, the usual way, we're going to use the interpretation of arc length. So if I go from here to this other point here, the distance I've traveled is going to be s, the arc length parameter. So that's what we're calling this ds dt. So that's our definition. Okay. From this definition, we can create the velocity vector. What do we need for a vector? A direction. Well, the velocity is just going to be the speed. And now, what could I do to get a direction in here? I think you use the unit tangent vector because that's the direction of motion. Okay, so this is our direction. And this is just the magnitude of velocity. This has to be the magnitude because if this is the unit tangent vector, then this has a magnitude of 1 already. Okay, so pretty straightforward there. So at each time, t, we say that the velocity vector, bless you, maybe here, we say that v of t points in the direction of motion and has magnitude equal to the speed of whatever is moving along that curve, let's say a particle. Okay, now this is where all your previous knowledge will make life easy. Okay, so that's just kind of the background. As you would expect, if r of t is the position function, what could I do to find v of t? So that'll be dr dt. Very good. And what could I do to find the acceleration vector? Take the second derivative. So I could either take the derivative of the velocity function 
Or that's the same as d squared r over gt squared. Looks familiar, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And speed. We define that as the magnitude of v of t, which is the same as ds dt. <clears throat> Any questions? The difference is that ds dt uh, is a literal, it's like the arc length parameter, so it'd be how much distance you've traveled along the curve. Does that make sense? So, and ds dt would be a scalar, mm -hmm. whereas r of t, if you take dr dt, that's going to be uh, a, vector. a vector, and it's the velocity vector. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. You could find ds dt by finding the magnitude of that. So that's the connection. Okay. So for example, one, let's say a particle moves along C, defined by R of T equal to two sine of t over 2, and I'm out of space, but one more component, 2 cosine t over 2. The two things I'd like for you guys to do real quick. One, um, find the instantaneous velocity at time t and the speed and also show that uh, everywhere basically that the acceleration vector is going to be orthogonal to v of t. Okay, so take a minute. All right, let's start going through it. For part A, what do we do? <laughs> the 
the velocity is just going to be r prime of t. Yes, it is just calculus. What is r prime of t? Cosine t over 2 minus sine t over 2. So this is the first part. This is the velocity vector at any given time. The speed is just the magnitude of the velocity, which in this case will be the square root of cosine squared. Yeah, it'll just be 1. Cosine squared of t over 2 plus sine squared of t over 2. So we get a constant speed here of 1. Okay, so that's part A. B, how do we show that something is orthogonal if there are two vectors? We could take the cross product. That would be probably more, yeah. Dot product is probably easier. Um, if you do cross product, you'd have to use sine and then it, a little bit longer than it needs to be. Dot product, though. What, what should we get? if they are orthogonal for a dot product. Good, so if v dot a equals zero, then v and a are orthogonal. So if I take v dot a, v is cosine t over 2 minus sine t over 2. I haven't found the acceleration vector yet, but that's just the derivative of this first one, right? So what's the derivative of cosine t over 2? Thank you. And then the derivative of minus sine t over 2? Negative 1 half cosine t over 2. You take the dot product, so you're going to get minus 1 half cosine t over 2, sine t over 2, and then a negative times a negative is positive, 1 half, and it's the same exact term, so they do cancel out. And that's it. Okay? Okay. Um... We'll probably do a couple more examples and then we'll wrap things up today. Let's say an object moves in three space so that the velocity vector is one t t squared and we want to find the coordinates of the particle at t equals one Given that at t equals 0, the position of the particle is at uh, negative 1, 2, 4. Okay, so for looking for position, then we should integrate. Very good. So the position function r of t is the integral of v of t dt. So if we integrate v of t, we get what? Integral of 1 t integral of half t squared, integral of t squared, one-third t cubed, 
and then plus some constant vector. All right, and now certainly we should find out what that constant vector is. How do we do that? So we know that at r of 0, very good, r of 0 gives us the vector negative 1, 2, 4. And if I plug in 0 currently into r of t, I get what vector? 0, 0, 0. So that means that my constant vector is exactly negative 1, 2, 4. Does that make sense? So now what do I do to find position at t equals 1? So then r of 1 is going to be 1, 1 half, 1 third, plus the constant vector, which was negative 1, 2, 4. So our current position at t equals 1 gives us a vector endpoint of 0, uh, what is that, 5 halves, 13 thirds, and that vector endpoint corresponds to the position coordinates of exactly the same value, 0, 5 halves, and 13 thirds. Okay? Last thing we'll talk about today. Displacement and distance traveled. So here's our curve C. <clears throat> Let's say this endpoint corresponds to R of T1, and this endpoint corresponds to R of T2. And again, you know, maybe here are the vectors that give us those endpoints. There is a displacement vector from this endpoint to that endpoint. Bless you. Which we're going to call delta r. And how could I find delta r? We could just do r of t2 minus r of t1. Okay, so if I take this vector, subtract that one, we're going to get this orange vector here. Okay. And now you've probably also learned an alternate formula for displacement involving an integral at some point. Does that sound familiar? Some of you say yes, some of you are saying, I've never learned about displacement. We could also find displacement of r. If I don't have the position function, then what would I have to integrate? Right, so dr dt, or velocity. And we'd go from t1 to t2, so this gives us the same result. Now, if I actually want to find the distance traveled, which will be s, we could take the same integral, t1 to t2, but now we do the magnitude of dr dt. Which is the same as just taking the derivative, I'm sorry, the integral of the magnitude of the velocity vector. So on one hand, we get a displacement vector. On the other hand, we get the net change 
and distance. Okay. So the final example we'll end with looks something like this. Let's say we want to find the displacement and the distance traveled over the interval, uh, let's say, 0 to 3 pi over 2 for the position function r of t equals 1 minus 3 sine t and then 3 cosine t okay so two things we got to find displacement since we already know the position function, I don't have to do the integral formula. I can just find the difference in the two vectors. So the displacement is going to be r of what? Very good. Minus r of 0. So let's calculate those vectors. If I plug in 3 pi over 2, sine of 3 pi over 2, it's negative 1, so the first component becomes 4. Cosine there is 0. And now I subtract the vector at 0, so we're going to get 1, 3. So our displacement vector is going to be 3, negative 3. Now, if I also want to find the distance traveled, then we know that that distance is just the magnitude from one endpoint to the next, so from zero to, I'm sorry, it's the integral from one endpoint to the next of the magnitude of velocity, right? The velocity vector we haven't found, but we can just do it right here. What's the velocity vector? Negative three cosine t, negative three sine t, What is the magnitude of that? 3. So we're integrating 3 dt from 0 to 3 pi over 2. The integral of 3 is 3t. Plug in t equals 0. t equals 3 pi over 2. You get 9 pi over 2. So the overall distance traveled is 9 pi over 2. And here's your uh, position vector that netted that change. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow.